is Laura with Jot and Tittle Typewriters. If you are not familiar with us, please visit our website, check it out, and uh, you'll find on there uh, vintage typewriters. We have covers, ribbons, uh, non-slip pads, and we even do custom ribbons. So if you send us your spool, we'll wind it for you. Um, I, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, so today we're doing a tutorial video for a Coronet Electric. And this is a 1960s. Um, I do not have a specific year, just a date range. Um, there are a lot of varieties of Coronet. There's a Coronet Electric 10, a Coronet Electric 12, Coronet Coronomatic, um, just a plain Coronet. And uh, the differences on them are probably very, very subtle because I can't tell you what they are off the top of my head. The 10 and 12 has to do with the carriage size. Why this one is called just Coronet Electric and not Coronet Electric 10, I don't know. But um, this is the original color. It is this really pretty um, green. Smith Corona had a sim this color on their older models and they called it seafoam green and it's still, it's this gorgeous sage green, lovely. And um, even the plastic parts up here on the carriage match. Um, and so if you wanna see how this types, well, there's a link below that shows you how uh, the typing demo, so you can just see a demonstration of, on the typing performance for it. Um, but this is just a tutorial I'm gonna walk you through on how to use this because um, you may have gotten one for yourself and you don't know how to use it. Now, if you don't know how to take your Smith Corona typewriter out of the case, please don't be embarrassed. That happens a lot. And there is a, uh, under our typewriter tips, I have a quick video that shows you how to take it out of your case. Okay, let's start from the back. Here is your paper holder, and you think, why do I need a paper holder? Well, that's because that paper flops over, and it, it's just really annoying, and you're constantly trying to lift it up, and so that comes in really, really handy. All right, margins have to be manually set. You just press and drag to set your margins. And bring them in and to wherever you want. Um, on my typing demos, you know, most people wonder, why do you start halfway in the page? I just do it because I try to, I do narrow margins because I try to show people how to use their margin release, which I will show you. So I'm gonna keep my margins narrow. Okay, over here is a paper release and I'm gonna show you that. So when you put in a piece of paper, you just set it there. You don't need to shove it down and then you just turn the handle and make sure it comes underneath the metal bar. So you lift that bar up, put the handle down. I like to make sure that paper edges are nice and even, which this is perfect. I kind of bring it up halfway. Um, if it was crooked, then this is your paper release. You just pull that forward. Then you can straighten out your paper however you want it. Mine was perfect. I'll probably mess it up now. And anyway, so then you just re-engage it same with when you want to take you're done and you want to take it out just pull that forward and pull your paper out and that's what that is for over here on the left side you're going to see a one two and a three that has to do with your return handle which is this metal bar right here so when you hit the return handle it's going to advance one two or three lines based on how you want to do it now to move this carriage, there's a lever on each side. And this particular one happens to have a lever broken on the left side. So you just pull in and um, your bell should ding when you get to your margin. Now this particular typewriter, the bell is not working. You hear that like little pop and ding, you know, not even a ding, but a um, <laughs> whatever sound that is. <laughs> That is supposed to be the bell. Um, and so your bell will go off when you get close to the margin. And that's to let you know, hey, you're at the end of your margin. You need to hit your return handle. But um, let's turn it on. What if you're in the middle of a word? So like I can't move anymore. It's stopped on me. It's not gonna let me type. 
So there's a button right here. It has MR, that's margin release. You press that. Then I can finish my word and then hit the return handle. So that's how that works. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off for a second. I'm gonna move this carriage all the way to the left because I wanna open this top and if I need to move this return handle out of the way so it doesn't scratch the top. So now I'm gonna pull it forward and inside you'll see the spool, ribbon spool. And this typewriter will use a universal ribbon. Make sure if you are purchasing a universal ribbon that it's a two inch spool with a half inch ribbon. You can find them on our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com. The link is in the description below and we have a couple of options. We just have a really inexpensive plastic, you know, that we buy in bulk that is very affordable for you. Or we have um, those ribbons that we hand roll here in our shop and you get twice as much ink ribbon. So it's gonna last you a whole lot longer. And then you get to choose plastic or metal spools um, just based on what you want. So again, that link is below. Um, when it's time to change out your ribbon, you just lift out your spool and, um, and then pop the new one in. And when you put the new one in, um, there's a little pin next to, there's a big one and then there's a little one. That little one needs to go in one of these four holes on here. I don't know if you can see that or not. So you may have to kind of jiggle it around a, a bit. There it goes until it pops down. It is a little messy job, so just be aware. And then you need to make sure that that ribbon is threaded through all the guide wires properly. In this case, um, to get it through, you have to go up top and you kind of have to pull on it a little bit. I am not gonna take it out because one, it's messy and two, it's a pain. And so I'm just being very honest about that, but it is what it is. So you can see the ink on there and it's gonna get everywhere. Um, now I do have an up close photo of this whole area. And if you just uh, click on that product listing link, it'll take you to the photos for the typewriter. And then you can look at it uh, at the up close photo bookmark it or save it, whatever you wanna do. And that'll just help you as a reference point um, for when you are threading your ribbon. Again, make sure it's threaded through the guide wire over there. Black is on top, red is on bottom. And then also, um, I always forget to mention this, but make sure the ribbon comes, um, can you see on the outside and around? Not this way, but this way. Does that make sense? I hope so. I should have my husband do a video on installing ribbon because, um, I mean, we have one, it's a really old one and it still works, but go under typewriter tips and we do have one on installing a ribbon. So I highly recommend you watch that. Okay. Um, also when you get to the end of the spool, it's not the end of the ink and the ribbon. You need to reverse the direction. Some ribbons you can get have an auto reverse feature on it. Um, uh, if you need to manually reverse, it's right here. It says rib rev. That means ribbon reversal. You just flip that up. That reverses the direction. You can reverse that many, many times before you use up all the ink in your ribbon. Okay. I'm gonna wipe off some of that ink because I don't want to get it on my shirt or on the typewriter. But, all right. I've already gotten it over here. It, nice thing is, is it wipes off very easily. Okay, you have your color selector. So down is red, up is black. This is your tabs. So I'm gonna hit the reverse or return handle. And if you just press that button, it'll tab over. And that's where I have the tab set. Now you can hit clear and that'll clear the tab. And that ended it, it'll stop at the margin. And then, oh, I gotta turn it on. So here's your on off switch. Okay, so now you can space over and say, oh, I want it right here and set it and voila, all right? Um, you have, this is your backspace. So I know the arrow always points that way and it, my friend came over and she's like, why does the arrow point that way? It points that way because it's moving the carriage this direction, but it moves your cursor that direction. 
So that's your backspace. Remember, backspace does not erase it. You just backspace and type over your mistakes. Copy set, this just determines how hard your type bars, which are these things right here, just determines how hard they strike the paper. Um, and then there are three keys on an electric typewriter that have an auto repeat when you just hold them down. That's gonna be your dash, your period, and your X. So you just hold those down, it'll auto repeat. Okay, so I think that's everything on your typewriter. Um, let me turn this off real quick. And if you wanna know where your serial number is, it should be right here. It's gonna be stamped um, over here. Sometimes it's over here, but usually here. And then you can look, go to like typewriterdatabase.com and look it up. And again, these electrics from Smith Corona um, really are just more of a decade. There's no specific dates on them, but you can still take a look. You can look at the galleries and other people's photos of typewriters. Some of them uh, know the dates of their typewriters because like they have the original paperwork. And so you can kind of get an idea from that. Um, and you'll also notice that certain front plates, um, like for the 60s, that's how I know that just by looking at the front plate, I know that this is from the 60s um, and it could be early 70s. But anyway, so that is how you use a Coronet Electric. I hope you found this helpful. Sorry about my dog. All right, have a good day. Thank you.